you are not making any sales on Google Ads or if the conversions are simply lacking, then this can be very frustrating. And in this video, I wanna give you the tools to diagnose and then also to fix this problem of getting clicks but no conversions. And it's completely irrelevant whether you are successful on other platforms like Facebook or whether you are not managing to make sales in the first place. In this video, I will share two general parts. The first one and the main part is fixing it on the ad side. And the second part is fixing it on the store side, which is arguably basically as important as the ad side. But in this video, I wanna be more focused on the ads, of course, due to the nature of this channel. So with that being said, let's jump into the first part. Let's start with the ads. And the first thing should be that you should want to isolate the issue. So is it something that happens across your entire account? In other words, is it impossible for you to make any sales in Google Ads or or is it only a certain campaign type, like for example, search? If your shopping ads perform well, but your search ads don't, then obviously uh, that should be clear. You wanna start on the search side and make sure that you try different keywords, different match types, that you try to send people to different final URLs and so on and so forth. But if it's only working on shopping, maybe this is because your product, for example, is very visual, it requires a lot of pre-qualification, it requires very strong buying intent, unlike many other products that can also be sold on the search uh, campaign network, sometimes just as well as on shopping. But if you cannot make any sales in the first place, then your first bet should always be to get shopping to work. There is no point in trying all campaign types if you struggle to make your first 10, 20, 100 sales. Shopping in 95% of the cases will be your lowest hanging fruit, so that's what you should definitely start with. So let's make sure that we're diagnosing this properly. The first thing you should do is take a look at your search term report. Are the searches that you can and find their relevant and do they match what you sell? I know this sounds obvious, but you wanna make sure that a very good chunk of this, at least like 80 to 90%, ideally of course a lot more than that, of the searches actually, and especially the clicks, actually are relevant for the products that you sell. And in the very beginning, when you want to make your first 10, 100, whatever sales in the first place, then it shouldn't just be about like ultra broadly related queries, but ideally as close as possible, okay? So if you, and now it's one of my typical examples here, if you sell like a black vintage leather jacket, for example, for men, right, then you shouldn't just go with, or you should block search terms that are as broad as jacket, right, and possibly even something like leather jacket. Later on, you should definitely open it up because the algorithm will eventually give you the sales even though you are having like slightly broader terms. But in the very beginning, you are focused on the absolute lowest hanging fruits. You wanna get the 80-20 right. And this means that you wanna focus on those slightly longer tail keywords that are described your, perfect, uh, your product perfectly rather than the broad ones, especially because in the beginning, the algorithm, the power of the algorithm won't be able to kick in yet and you have to do more manual work. The next thing is your product image. Does it showcase your product in a good way? It's not so much about the click thread of the image here just yet, but rather about you know, I've seen cases where people showed their product uh, image or where they showed their product with an image that was not really a good reflection of the product because it was a weird angle or because the product was very small or because they just showed an isolated view on the product. Make sure that your product image in the beginning is primarily focused on pre-qualification. So showing the main aspect about the product, the main, uh, you know, uh, the front angle, the most important angle, if, if highlighting the key feature, whatever it might be. Later on, you can do image optimization for the sake of click-through rate, because when you wanna scale your shopping ads, this is super important, but in the beginning, it should be about pre-qualification. Next thing, and that should be very obvious, is have you gotten enough clicks in the first place? I've heard people being nervous because they didn't make their sale after 50 clicks or 100 clicks. It goes without saying that, especially when you're just getting started, you need to make sure that you get a significant portion of clicks. And I wouldn't even judge my shopping campaign at all before making it, before getting at least like 200 to 300 clicks. Of course, it depends on what you sell. If you sell a very, very high ticket item, $1,000, $500, you know, high, furniture or other type of stuff, then sometimes you might wanna give it like 500, 700, 800 clicks or more to get a realistic idea, especially because you have to keep in mind that in the beginning, most likely your conversion rates will be lower than later. So expect something when you're just starting out, expect like a conversion rate of, depending on what you sell, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.5%, maybe 1%, something along those lines. So 
So if you judge it too early, then that's definitely, or that can be one of the key reasons why you're not seeing sales in the first place. So give it at least a few hundred valuable, high relevance clicks determined by the search term report in order to judge you know, your next steps. And then also, which is fairly obvious too, is make sure that you test multiple products if applicable. If you only have one product store, obviously that doesn't make sense. But if you have multiple products, don't only focus on your proven bestseller from Facebook. Don't focus on the one with the biggest or highest margin. Try to, at least if, you know, um, basically the one product that got the most clicks, which typically is a thing, right? Most of the time with shopping ads, one, two, three products will get the majority of the clicks. Try to also get some clicks to the other products. If your number one product got 200 clicks now without a sale or so, and the others just got 10, 15, seven, try to broaden your budget a little bit and give those other products a chance as well. I have seen many cases where the number one Google seller ended up being a different product than the number one Facebook seller or Pinterest seller or TikTok seller, for example. So make sure that you start with your proven ones, but if that doesn't work, give those other ones a try as well. Talking about clicks in general, you should still try to reduce your CPCs. Now you might ask what, why that's a secondary metric. Why should I worry about that? Of course it's secondary, but you can get more clicks and more visitors that way. If you spend $3 on a click, it will cost you a lot to get like a really good statistically significant amount of people to your site. Whereas if you spend $1 or 50 cents or something, that's a lot easier. That goes for shopping and search, right? So um, any sort of optimization that you can do from negative keywords, from adjusting your bidding strategy, from using a manual CPC bid with lower CPCs than necessary. If you're consistently spending your daily budget, you should definitely reduce your CPCs because essentially you can get more traffic at the same price and so on and so forth. So while you're trying to get your first like really consistent sales on Google, you should along the way at least somewhat try to improve the secondary metrics as well, even though of course they should always be, as the name suggests, secondary, okay? And if you already have some campaigns that are working well outside of shopping, then you can also consider using target ROAS as a bidding strategy. If you're just starting out with the account as a whole, manual CPC or sometimes maximize clicks is the way to go. But if you have a successful account, but you don't have successful search campaigns or the only thing that you cannot get to work for whatever reason is shopping, then you might want to jump straight into target ROAS because it will benefit from the overall account conversion performance. And last but not least, you should pay attention to early indicators. That's super important. You should only have one primary conversion and that's typically purchase, right? But you should use secondary conversions too, add to carts, checkouts, whatever else you might want to do here in that regard, right? Like certain time um, spends on the, on the site, but especially add to carts and checkouts are key in understanding if a campaign goes in the right direction. So if for example, you spent hundred dollars on a campaign, zero sales, but you got nine add to carts and three checkouts already. This might tell you that the campaign is close to making the first sale. Or if you have three sales and 50 add to carts or something, you at least know that there is some buying intent, that you generally are getting some good, high relevant people to your site. Don't get me wrong here. Of course, it's an add to cart is basically valueless unless they turn into a customer. But of course, you can do the math. And if your store, for example, has an add to cart to purchase ratio of three to one, but on Google ads, it's like 20 to one or 15 to one, something is wrong with the setup there or something else, right? So keep that in mind. Normally, the add to cart ratio that we see with most brands is anywhere between three to one and like five to one. But depending on what you sell and depending on how mature or new your brand is, it can literally be like 10 to 1, 15 to 1, right? So there are some averages, but make sure that you import them to Google Ads and that you are then using them as secondary conversions to look at. So those were some key points on the ad part. Let's briefly talk about the store conversion rate part as well. And that part is so important that with all of our e-commerce clients, and we only work with e-com clients in regards to Google Ads, we started to help them with conversion rate optimization as well. So we're sharing ideas, we're sharing inputs, we're sharing detailed reports, videos where we tell them, hey, that's how you can po uh, potentially increase the conversion rate of your product page, your collection page, specifically for Google Ads, right? Because that gets more and more important. And while of course our focus is the Google Ads side of things, obviously, we help them do that as well and we give them detailed you know, advice for how to improve there. And based on that, here are some general ideas and things that you can do. So first of all, in regards to the store and your products, 
If you have gotten a lot of clicks to a product without sales, have you tried slightly reducing the price? I know, of course, you cannot just come in and randomly reduce the price by 30% uh, just for the sake of Google uh, conversions, but if you have a product that gets a lot of attention on shopping and you are making few sales or you're just breaking even or something like that, try a slightly lower price point, maybe even with a Google Shopping promotion where it shows as an actual promotion on the shopping ad listing. Sometimes you have been able to you know, boost our click-through rate by 30% that way, double our conversions, things like that, that will offset the promotion, right? In the end, it's just a numbers game. Would you give up 10% margin for four times as many conversions? Normally, yes, you would. But of course, there is a there, there is a place and there is a, a, a number where this whole thing doesn't make sense anymore. But play with the price a little bit, especially with products where you have a very good margin, where you can give up a little bit because shopping is pure competition. And with the right price, you might be able to get way more conversions. Then also look at your product page and check where there is any key info missing. Do you have transparent shipping? Do you have transparent pricing? Is there anything that may, you know, keep people from, uh, yeah, buying your products, right? I've seen cases where people had like actual money back guarantees because the product was quite expensive, but they have been hiding it somewhere like you know you were have to have to scroll down and then at some point there was a tiny little batch saying like 30 day no questions asked money back guarantee right make those things super prominent right below the add to cart button right below the title above the price or something like that make them green if you want to also free shipping super important make it very visible make it clear people want as few uncertainties as possible when they buy, right? So people think, yeah, I will answer all these questions in the checkout. No, you should do it upfront because there are people that won't even go to the checkout if they have no idea what your shipping costs and your, uh, you know, money back guarantee, etc. is. Make sure that you answer these questions upfront and you will have a way higher chance of converting them. Then is your product page generally clean and optimized? What I see a lot, for example, is that people use images everywhere. They have a gallery of 20 images on their product and then they have 30 more images in their product description and then they have review images etc don't do that right keep all your images ideally in the gallery unless you have a very nice like landing page style structure maybe with like you know before and after sliders or other cool things that's a different story but i see way too many stores that have like an image gallery in the first place and sometimes they're even repeating those same images on the product page everything is messy then you have text in between keep things clean minimal simple uh, make sure that every image that you show has a purpose don't show like the same image in four super super slight variations but rather think about every image okay does this contribute to someone making a decision to purchase the product right generally of course the more images the better but if you have 30 images that that have almost no place on your site um, and that are not actually telling people more about the product, then this might not be very useful. And in that regard, you should also install tools like Hotjar or Lucky Orange um, that actually show you what people are doing on your site. This will help you make better decisions in regards to conversion rate optimization. Is there something broken with your site, right? Are people not able to click a certain button? Or is are they scrolling to the reviews in the first place? Maybe you should switch the sections a little bit. Maybe you should answer more questions at the very top of your product page just because almost no one is scrolling to the bottom. Those are things where these tools can be super helpful. So here are some like final points, you know, partly recap, but also uh, points in general. First of all, do not focus on minor things at that stage. If you're lacking sales, then it's all about the 80-20 principle. It's not about, I know that I mentioned refining CTR and CPC is always important, but that should be done on the side right? Don't try to add three different headlines. Don't try to slightly rework your product descriptions for a shopping campaign or something like that. Focus on those big things. Focus on search terms. Focus on your image in shopping. Focus on, um, you know, possibly adjusting your price. Focus on your product page. Those are the things that will move the needle if you're absolutely struggling to make sales. Then don't look at your ads only, right? Yes, Excelling at Google Ads becomes very important when you truly want to scale to the next level and spend like 10, 20, 50, 100,000 per month or something, then it gets more and more important. But in the beginning, make sure that you spend, I would say, even more time on your site than in Google Ads before you're spending at least three to 5,000 a month minimum, then it will slightly shift and you can probably have like, you can see bigger leverage in the ad manager from what you're doing on the ad side. Also, be ready to make like bold moves, 
okay? If you are lacking sales, then try an entirely new campaign type. Try a totally different set of products. Possibly change your bidding strategy completely rather than making those small incremental changes of slightly uh, adjusting an ad or something like that, as I said. And also, in terms of product selection, as I said before, start with your proven bestsellers, but be prepared to possibly shift and try something else because maybe those are proven bestsellers just on Facebook, but on shopping, there is too much competition. On search, there are too many similar ads. So start with those because you have to start somewhere, but generally be prepared to do other to test other products as well. Now, if you are past this challenge and you already have good sales in place or you have good sales on other platforms, but you struggle to make Google Ads work, then I want to invite you to a so-called Ignite call where we basically sit together and I give you a full detailed roadmap of what you can do with Google Ads for your brand, what I think sort of the next steps should look like, and also my personal sort of estimation of how much you can scale Google Ads. You see, our biggest client right now generates $2 million per month, actually a bit more than that, just on Google. And we've seen anything from like, you know, 10,000 a month up to this two point something million mark and, you know, anything in between. So if you want to scale your Google Ads to the next level, whether you're already successful as a edit or you just try to get Google to work in the first place, make sure to check the link in the description, book an Ignite call. This is not one of your typical sales calls, but actually me telling you exactly sort of the next steps you should take. And then you can let us know whether you want us to help you in implementing those steps in your specific brand. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments where you are with your Google Ads right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe for more Google Ads for e-commerce content. And with that being said, I really look forward to see you in the next video again. Bye-bye.